afternoon, Retriever fans. Welcome to the March edition of the Retriever Roundup. I'm your host, Dan LaHatt. It's been a hectic winter-spring transition here at UMBC as the basketball teams concluded their action up at the America East Tournament, while the baseball, softball, men's lacrosse, women's lacrosse, and the tennis teams have gotten their spring season underway. After a turbulent 2013 season, the UMBC softball team has come out in 2014 swinging and they've already hit their stride. First day of the UMBC Dog Pound Invitational as the Retrievers had the second game of the day hosting the Drexel Dragons at 145. Taylor Hall put the Retrievers up 1-0 with an RBI single in the third. Here in the fourth inning, the bases are full and Danielle O'Neill reaches on an error scoring a run, putting UMBC up 2-0 and then Bridget O'Malley would walk in the next at bat. The Retrievers would go up 3-0 in the fourth. Freshman pitcher Jessica Holte coming off her first career loss kept the Dragons in check here in the seventh inning with a runner on. She manages to work around the damage here with a ground out to her and then the game would end on this ground out to the catcher. She pitched seven innings scoreless. Retrievers would win 3 nothing. Holty would improve to 10 and 1. Hosting Hampton in the final game of the UBC Dog Pound Invitational. Bottom of the first inning, Taylor Hall goes yard. This solo shot put UMBC up one to nothing. From there, Jessica Holty, the pitcher, would shut down Hampton. She had seven strikeouts and only allowed one run in seven innings. Hall up again here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and she would single through the left side. And then Chelsea Bertolio right after her. She would bloop one into left field right inside the line, putting runners at first and second. Then a few batters later, it's freshman Jacqueline Buckley. And she would go yard. This is a two-out, three-run bomb, putting UMBC up 4 nothing. Megan Salba would hit a pinch hit two-run homer in the next inning. And then Jessica Holte would stop a little rally in the top of the seventh with this little pop-up. Retrievers win 6-1, to one, 800 wins for Coach Joe French. With the crazy weather we've had here in Baltimore so far, the men's and women's tennis team have played over at 40 West Racquet Club. That has not deterred the Retrievers from having an excellent start to the season. UMBC men's tennis hosting George Mason at the Route 40 Racquet Club on a Friday afternoon. Melker Svard, number two, had a pretty easy time. He won his match 6-1, 6-1 after the Retrievers took the doubles point. Here you see number one, Justin Carter. He also had a relatively easy time winning 6 love 6-1. Six, at the number five, here's Daniel Gray. He took his match 6-3, six, 6-3, three, six, three, and Biak Akinshamoyan at the number six, one seven five six four. Retrievers win, six one. Two matches on the day for UMBC Tennis. First, the women taking on Morgan State. Josephine Stang Janssen would help them to a 6-1 victory. She would take number six singles and number three doubles with partner Miriami Dolashvili, who also won at number three singles against the Bears and number one singles against UMES. Marlena Kulrash won at number five singles against Morgan State and number three against UMES. Olga Bakulova won at number one against Morgan and Kim Berghaus won at number two against Morgan. Retrievers win 6-1 against the Bears, 5-0 against the Hawks, and the men win 4-0 against the Hawks. The men's lacrosse team has started out its season with some familiar opponents and some first-year programs. They took on Maryland and Johns Hopkins while also taking on Mercer, Richmond, and Monmouth. UMBC taking on Mercer in the Retrievers' first midweek game of the 2014 season. Beautiful night at UMBC Stadium and a beautiful start for UMBC as Matt Gregoire gets the Retrievers on the board just 141 into the game, catching in on a rebound. Retrievers would never trail in this game. Here's Grant Searfoss, the freshman. He scores his first collegiate goal in making it 2 nothing, and then a nice passing play from Jack Gannon, who hits Nate Lunas right in the middle of the field. Lunas buries the shot here with a left hand and makes it 3 nothing with 5.51 to go in the first quarter. Connor Gordon strong again in goal for UMBC in this game. Gordon, his fifth straight game with 10 or more saves. He makes a couple of point blank stops there, 4 to 2 at the half. But the Retrievers would turn it on in the third quarter. Nice passing play there. That's Jack Gannon getting his second of two back to back goals. That would make it 7 2. And then the route was on. Steve Windsor, a nice dodge and score there. That gives the UMBC an 8 to 2 lead. Nice work here by Zach Lincoln. It's just coming back from injury. He scores with the left hand there. 
And UMBC, once again, is en route to a 7-0 third quarter, which would put them up 11-2 after three quarters of play. Pat Young scored there. Then Ty Kasher, he nails his third goal of the season. He had two goals and one assist in the contest. Fourth quarter action here. Gordon, another save. And again, UMBC would wrap it up here. A beautiful goal by Searfoss falling to the ground. That makes it 13-4 Retrievers. They go on to win it 15-6. Despite second place finishes at both of their conference championship meets, the UMBC swimming and diving program has made history in 2014. Mohamed Hussein qualified for his second NCAA championship, becoming the first retriever to do so. And female Emily Escobedo qualified for the women's championship. This marks the first time in UMBC program history that both a female and a male swimmer have qualified for the national meet. You know, it's been, uh, it's been tougher this year, you know, when you get fast. It's harder to get faster every year, so this year was a, lot, it was a lot different. Last year I dropped three seconds into 100 I am. This year I only dropped around half a second. So even though like, I practice harder and everything, but it's only focused on the small details to get faster and faster every time. Uh, you know, last year after the 200 I am, I said to myself, you know, next year I want UMBC to be scoring at NCAAs, so I want to be top 16 next year. And this year I'm already uh, 15th on the nation right now. Uh, and waiting for Pac-12 to go next week. So hopefully this, this year we can score it at, at NCAAs. Before I came here, it was just like studying. I don't really care about studying. I only care about swimming. After I came here, I was like, oh, okay. Now like I have a career. I have like, I have to focus on my studying. I have to focus on my swimming. It's a lot different. In Egypt, it was a little bit uh, hard to uh, like study and swim at the same time. So here is, it's a little bit organized and better. Uh, well, hopefully uh, after May, I, hopefully I can go to grad school and I, want, I actually want to keep swimming. Uh, I just, I was on the web, Afina website today in the morning. I just found out that the World Champs is going to be next year in Russia. So I want to, I want to do that. And after, in 2016, hopefully I can go to the Olympics. I mean, I've always set um, really high goals for myself. So I was hoping, like the goal when I came in here was to make NCAAs. And I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. I just said, let's go for it, you can't really lose. So I went for it and it happened. <laughs> I mean, right now for this um, NCAA, I just really want to have fun with it because it's my first one and it's just really like amazing for me to even think that I was able to do this. So hopefully in the next three years, I'll just be able to move higher and higher up. They're really excited and they're really supportive of me. And I just, I don't think I would have been able to make it without like, my teammates, even just at practice, having people push me, like Brian was always there trying to get me to race. And when I thought I was drowning, he was always pushing me to go harder and harder and trying to make me keep up with him. And it's just a really exciting team and family, really. There's a lot to say. Firstly, yeah, we didn't win team championships this year, but I'll tell you what, the way our team felt, even getting second was a, was a team championship for us. Our men were challenged more than we ever had before. Our, um, our women had a great meet as well, and it's just a great competition. What we found is that our men and women came together as individuals more, which made it more exciting. Then you look at what happened at the end of the season, and we're able to have Mohammed sitting at 15th right now in the nation, um, Emily 26th in the nation. We're just so proud because this is history. You know, we're making history here with our program. Our, our third female, our first male, it's the first athlete to go twice in a row, and now we have a male and a female in the same year. A little complicated twist for us because we're trying to take care of both athletes two different weeks, but it's an awesome opportunity. And I'll tell you, our alums are proud, our team is proud, and our school is proud, and we're pretty excited about it. Although both the men's and women's basketball team's seasons came to an end in Albany at the America East Championships, it was quite the experience for the players, coaches, and fans alike. The only all-rookie selection to be selected to an all-conference team. She ranks fourth in scoring, sixth in rebounding, and fourth in field goal percentage. From UMBC, Sarah Tarver. Our third team all-conference. 
from UMBC, my neck of the woods, Sarah Tarber. From New Hampshire, Elizabeth. The Rookie of the Year award goes to a five-time Rookie of the Week selection. She is one of only three players to rank in the top ten of the conference in scoring. six times this season, and led all freshmen with five double doubles. The American East Rookie of the Year from UMBC, Sarah Tarver. Um, first, I want to thank Coach Stern and the rest of the coaching staff for believing in me, and of course to the teammates and my family, just for your love and support throughout the entire season. Um, the rest of the coaches, thank you so much for voting for me. There's so many good young players in the league, and I'm truly honored. So thank you again, and good luck this weekend. It's great. I mean, I just can't believe it. It's honestly like kind of like shocking. Like, oh my gosh, you know, because like playing, you don't like really play for an award. You just play to play. So it's great to be working this way. So how do you feel receiving this award today? Uh, it feels great. I probably couldn't do that all my coaches and teammates and all the school I had. So how, how do you feel seeing these players get his awards today? I think it's a really great uh, thing for our university and for our athletic department uh, and our program to see these two wonderful women, Sarah and Taylor, uh, bring home these awards. I think it shows that our future is really, really bright. They work really hard both on the court and in the classroom, and uh, it's a very de a definitive sign that uh, we're on the up and up and great things are ahead. Five Rookie of the Week honors. He is the league's leading freshman scorer and fourth overall. From UNBC, Rodney Elliott. Team, he's one of only two players to rank in the league's top five in both scoring and assists. From UNBC, Rodney Elliott. This year, um, but there was one really outstanding freshman, and I couldn't agree more with this choice. Let's meet the uh, rookie of the year in the America East. UNBC's first ever rookie of the year honoree. He was a unanimous choice for the award. Scoring 20 or more points seven times this season, he is fourth among scoring leaders, averaging 15.4 points per game, and was second in conference games. Also a third-team all-conference selection, he is the lone player in the league with 400 points, 100 rebounds, and 100 assists this season. The America East Rookie of the Year from UMBC, Rodney Elliott. That's all we have for this Retriever Roundup. Be sure to log on to umbcretrievers.com for all the latest news, updates, and photos. I'm your host, Dan LaHatt.